Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again for my team selector ahead of the game against Man United on Thursday night at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. What a game this is. Um, it's a very hard one to try and anticipate because both teams, I think, are fundamentally flawed. I think there are some parallels between both teams, even though I think it's about seven or eight points currently. Divide them in the league. You look at the tactical shambles that are Man United on a, on a regular basis but they do have this knack of getting out of jail they do have some individuals who make a difference more than Chelsea do and that's why they're higher in the league so it's a weird game because I, I go into it feeling like I do and I felt for a while against Man United is there is ample opportunity for Chelsea to go at Man United to exploit them to create opportunities that hopefully will elevate some of our best players but then you also do know very, not only because of the Man United sort of tax in the way they're able somehow against Chelsea to always find a result, but then also Chelsea's ability to shoot themselves in the foot, which was best demonstrated against 10 man Burnley in that second half on Saturday. That, you know, you can't have much confidence that Chelsea will go out there and make the most out of the opportunities that could be presented to them. So I think it could be a high scoring game. It could just be a case of, who's less embarrassing on the night uh, because that it kind of feels like Chelsea and Man United have been battling for that in recent years. So it's a, it's a bizarre game to try and predict and anticipate. Before I do get into my team, I think we have to talk about Pochettino's press conference because for a number of reasons, I found it highly impressive. Uh, I thought it was one of his most commanding, convincing and inspiring press conferences of the year. He hasn't done it a lot in recent times. I don't think Pochettino has covered himself in glory with some of the things he said. I don't think he's tried his best to try and command respect from Chelsea fans, try and engage with them enough. But this press conference did a number of things for me. Now, of course, if Chelsea end up going out at Stamford Bridge tomorrow night and completely, if you want to call it bottling it, or completely, you know, just going out there and having another tragic performance. This isn't going to really mean much. But I thought, firstly, the way the club came out with that statement to defend Conor Gallagher with the, again, insane nonsense we see on social media, specifically against academy players. We have seen this for a number of years now. You can go back on this. This channel kind of is proof of it, the way I've spoken about it so many times, whether it be against Mason Mount, whether it be against Tammy Abraham, whether it be against Trevor Chalaba, Rhys James, the list goes on. And it's not just academy players. Abuse and deranged people on social media going after players is, is nothing new. And Pochettino gave a, a brilliant extended quote about this in terms of social media. And I definitely suggest go and re rewatch the press conference. But I love the way he defended Conor Gallagher. I love the way he defended his players. But then also went on to take responsibility for what happened on Saturday. And he spoke about how... I don't want this Chelsea team to be one that goes out there and plays exhibition football. I want them to run. I want them to compete. I want them to seriously compete no matter who the opponent is. And again, you may just you know shrug. I understand at this point of the season, some people may not take those words very seriously, but I thought for what this game requires, I, I think it was the correct message. And I think Pochettino was very, as I say, assertive. And I think he needed to be rather than kind of soft, a little bit meek, a little bit passive, because it wasn't just defending Conor Gallagher, which I think was the, the correct thing to do from the club point of view and to understand that that is beyond the pale we need to oppose it we need to also expose the lies and disinformation that are propagated on social media for a number of years now against academy players that i think needs to be confronted it's a it's a toxic situation and it's kind of its own thing but then also to take responsibility and to say simply it's not good enough to just turn up and and play around and play some nice football if you're not willing to compete these are, I hope, words that connect to his players because Chelsea need to compete tomorrow night very seriously um, in a game that, that should mean a lot. And because even though this Man United team are flawed, they are not the Man United team of the mid-2000s. I mean, this is, I feel like a little bit like Graham Souness or Roy Keane here because this is not new analysis. But Man United are still a team that if you do beat them, it does mean a lot. And I think psychologically to beat Man United for the first time since 2017, a lot of... Poch's predecessors have failed to do in the Premier League so he has an opportunity tomorrow and hopefully could boost things going into the end of this season so Man United yes I mean structurally 
are tragic. I mean, they really are in terms of, and I, and I do want to sort of shout out the work I'm beginning to do on the sideline, a new Chelsea platform, subscription platform. Please go and sign up to it. There's going to be some great content from myself and others going up on there. I do a new preview show on there, expected threat. It's not going to change what I'm doing on this channel. It's extra content, but we really look tactically at the opponent on that game. So please go and check that out. Link in the description box below for expected threat. But for this, it's it's just so obvious. You watch them, the number of shots they give away, how much of a gap there is between midfield and defence. And there are parallels between Chelsea and Man United. We have spoken about how Pochettino's structure hasn't really helped to protect the likes of Moises Caicedo. And you could see that again tomorrow in our inability to defend set pieces. That gives opportunity to players like Scott McTominay, Harry Maguire, who I'm sure will be starting tomorrow night because Man United have some injuries of their own. There is ample opportunity here. I think it just comes down to that very classic Chelsea thing of do we take the opportunities? Chelsea amassed quite a high XG in the first half against Burnley, but we simply were unable to take those chances. If the same thing occurs against Man United, then we're asking for trouble because I don't think you can back this current Chelsea defence to keep a clean sheet, especially with some of the talent that Man United do have at their disposal. So really Chelsea, I think, need to be on the front foot. They need to, to go out there and really try and go at the throats of Man United very early on. You need to try and isolate a player like uh, Kobe Minor, who of course has done brilliant things for Man United but he is asked to do a lot in this Man United team and, and, and there's only so much a player like him can do and you really need to try and isolate that back four that doesn't have the best speed that doesn't have the best decision making you really need to try and pin them down and get players like Cole Palmer Jackson running the channels Gusto if he can making those overlaps Enzo Fernandez playing those balls that can make a difference because it's easy to forget that he is still playing some very nice passes in games we, we just need to see it a lot more so all of those things for me make this a not a, a game of opportunity for Chelsea it's just I can talk about all of that with enthusiasm but we all can sit here and say that and it's nice in theory in execution we know Chelsea not only sometimes will not take their opportunities but they also will shoot themselves in the foot especially defensively so this is my team. Obviously, Petrovic and Gar, I think he does deserve some criticism for for the second goal. Obviously, I think he'll be really criticising himself, but it's another case collectively from a set piece of Chelsea uh, allowing too much space to the opponent. Then in defence, Malo Gusto, it's wonderful he's fit and ready to go. I, I was really concerned we were going to get that dagger about him being out for months, but he can make a big difference in this game. I think in defence... It's it's tough. I, I I still think it is a little bit tough because who do you trust at the current point? I'm still not having Silver in this game. Dezassi and Badi Ashil, I thought would have been a good centre back partnership because we saw how they have worked this season because of that relationship. But both of them do have an error in them. I I still think he is likely to go with that. But with Trev Chalaba being in team training, I would actually put him in the starting eleven here over probably Benoit Badi Ashil. I thought Dezassi and Chalaba. Looks like a decent partnership, but then even Badia Shil and Chalabar, I think, would be a nice partnership. You can then put Chalabar more on the right side where he is a little bit more natural. You have Badia Shil on the left. Again, it is a toss of a coin at the moment, and that's the unfortunate thing is I, I don't have a ton of trust in them, but given some of the results we did get against the likes of Newcastle, I, I think Pochettino is more likely to go with the Zassi and Chalabar. Uh, but I wouldn't mind seeing Chalabra and Badi Ashil, uh, to be honest. Marco Carrera, I think, is playing left back. Chilwell's still not ready for this game. I, I believe it actually might be illness now. It's not just a knock. He's, he's got illness, so he won't be available for this game. Midfield, I mean, this is every single game. It's the same thing, which Caicedo and Enzo. And I think Liam Toomey made a good point on an athletic podcast where they were talking about Chelsea, where... The energy and the pressing that is so integral to the way Pochettino wants to play simply hasn't been there because of the lack of options in central midfield. It's it's difficult to rotate and Enzo and I think Caicedo are still going to be playing a, a number of games. It's whether you rotate, maybe not for this game, but especially on Sunday, whether you, with Chukameka back, can you start to play him in midfield, drop Gallagher a little bit deeper against weaker opposition? Because at the moment, who are you playing? You don't have Ugo Chukwu. You don't have Romeo Lavia. It's not that simple at the moment. So um, I, I do think those two will continue to play. It's whether, as I say, Caicedo can do enough to isolate Man United's best players, whether those gaps can be stopped where, where Chelsea will be hit on transition. I think that's a big thing for Chelsea against Man United because that's where Man United will want to prosper and really hurt you. But then also whether Enzo can have enough on the ball to hurt Man United when he does get it. 
Then the three behind a striker, Cole Palmer, the man who scores pretty much every game at the moment. He scored against Man United earlier in the season, but of course he scored two at the weekend. You don't have a Chelsea team without Cole Palmer. It really does feel like we are just passing the ball and hoping Palmer does something on his own. It should be more than that, but that's just the reality at the moment. He is a game changer. He makes the difference in the final third for Chelsea. Um, I think Conor Gallagher will start as number 10. I think that... He didn't have a good game at the weekend. I, I wouldn't mind Chukamaka starting this game. Again, I, I think that it's difficult to see a Chelsea team without Gallagher because he does so much work off the ball that I think is important against a team that do have quality like Man United. But then I also am looking at that area between the midfield and defence of Man United and looking at Chukamaka. So maybe you do play Chukamaka on the left and then look at Gallagher, those two potentially rotating. Because he's just back from another knock, I don't suspect that Chukomeka will start this game. He may come off the bench, but I'd like to see him involved at some point during this game, maybe later on, because I think he could make a difference, especially if United go for their kind of classic, more Solskjaer tactic of sitting deeper. He can maybe unlock their defence. On the left, Mudrik got a chance. I don't think he took the opportunity. And I do think because Sterling came off the bench and provided a very big assist, for Cole Palmer that should have won us the game. I think Sterling will start this game. I, I did think he would start one of the previous two. I think it would have been better for him to start against Burnley. But Sterling, it's... Again, I I don't... I, I don't know what you're going to get from Raheem Sterling. I really don't. I, I think there is as much chance that Sterling turns up and has a real tragic game where he is wayward, messes up opportunities, doesn't provide the experience and output that you need... As much as him maybe providing those instrumental moments to actually do change things. Unfortunately, we cannot deny that it's been more on the other spectrum, the negative spectrum than positive spectrum with Sterling. But I just look at what happened at the weekend and I think that Sterling will play this game. And Mudrick was very erratic. But then also you do look at Mudrick's ability potentially off the bench in this game again where against a tiring Man United defence, dependent on game state, of course, if Chelsea are leading, then I think Mudrick becomes a very, very dangerous player off the bench, uh, which is why I think he'll drop to the bench for this game. And, and Nicholas Jackson, too, should have scored at the weekend. He had some great opportunities, didn't take them. But I just think for this game, I want to see Jackson run those channels a little bit more, especially down the right channel. He just looks more comfortable in those areas. And whether, again, you're rotating with the left winger or whoever is playing number 10 to maybe take a more central role, wherever you're rotating with Palmer who's more of a finisher I think Jackson for me just looks a better player and I think causes more problems when he does drift wider it's not that he can't score in kind of those natural centre forward positions we have seen him and Malo Gusto link up but I just think Jackson as the months have progressed and maybe this is where Chelsea could be going over the summer and next season especially fingers crossed if Nkunku returns he looks better for me in those areas. And, and whether you can maybe drag a player like Harry Maguire out wide a little bit more and that opens up space for someone else like a Cole Palmer to run into, I think that's where I want to see Jackson a lot more. And, and the more we do that, I think the more effective a player Jackson becomes. So that is my team. Let me know yours in the comments below and I'll see you again very soon. All the best.